Hello everybody, it's um, Litsock and for the first time in over a year we are all together again with some of our new arrivals, welcome, and uh, old friends, uh, some of whom are about to leave us but we won't, we won't dwell on that for too long. Um, and it's Litsock Thursday afternoon for 15pm. So welcome everybody. So we want to hear what you've been reading because Mr Humphreys, Sriya and I talked last week what we've been reading. So over to Year 7 who are sitting at the other table. Lulu, thank you very much. So, <laughs> Um, I've been reading Chameleon by Sarah Holding, um, the author at visit um, that we went on teams, and it's actually a really good book. It's um, it's like chameleonoids, and there have been three of them, and like um, it's sort of intersections. Um, they each have like their own point of story, and it's also about climate change and like how like the three chameleonoids like are trying to put everything back in order in the like city of Atlantis. It's really good so far. Um, well, uh, she wrote the Sea Bean trilogy, um, but I'm reading Chameleon. Yeah, I I really liked her talk and how like she um she wrote her books because of climate change and how she wrote about climate change but then also made it like a story behind it as well and made it really exciting. So then like, it inspired me as well like to read uh, her books and see and like f um focus more on climate change. And, um, and is set actually in Atlantis or away from Atlantis? Well, it's set in Atlantis. Atlantis, but it's also set on like different planets as well. So this is a Sirius and other places because like they move about and like they have to go away from the city of Atlantis because it's because uh, everyone had to be evacuated. And how many, um, how many characters are there? Well, there are like the three main characters because Chameleon. Well, I think Chameleon like stands for Cam, Mel, and Leon. And like they're, they're the three chameleonoids who have blue eyes, so they're the first ever like people to have blue eyes. Um, but then also based around Pa, who made them, and like their backstory as well, because they're trying to figure out who they are. Well, he's very like, he's very weird at the moment, kind of. You kind of know who he is, but then he's got a sort of backstory that we haven't figured out yet. So like you get hear snippets of it, but you don't know like what made him like leave serious and stuff. Yes. Um I've been reading a book called The Magician no, The Murderer's Ape. And yeah, my friend lent it to me, and I'm not very far into it, but it's about this um, this ape called I can't remember the name Sally Jones, uh, Sally Jones. <laughs> um, and so and she's I think that she belongs to um, the captain of this crew on a ship sort of thing. Um, <laughs> And but then the um, the the chief he gets accused of murder, uh, so that's why it's the murder is ape. Um, but that's as far as I've read. So how far in, how far into it are you exactly? Um, just where he gets accused, I think. Ah, so okay. yeah. So, uh, so what do you make of it so far? Are you enjoying it? Uh, yeah, and the and the illustrations are also really good. Yes, they, they are. They are beautiful illustrations. So. Um, what is it you like about the illustrations then? Um, they're, they're in black and white, but they're still like really in depth, so it's just more interesting. Mm -hmm. And what do you make of the, of the story so far? Um, I think that it's, it's really interesting because it's gone quite a long way and it's not very far in, so I'm, um, 
I'm looking forward to like finding out how far it will change from how far it's changed in so little time. Yeah, it, it does go uh, to various places. It goes around the world, this one. So um, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but it's a really good story. I mean, what, what do you think about the fact that the main character is basically an atheist? Um, I find it really interesting. Yeah, it is. Uh, can I just ask, what, um, how did you find out about this book? Uh, my friend gave it to me. Because Mr. Sayer is certainly Mr. Been Sayer is very keen, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I was wondering if he maybe he uh, sort of uh, tipped you off to it. But, okay, well, it's good to hear. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. And is it, um, does she speak or is it just from her interview? Uh, yeah, she speaks. She does speak. I think. Okay. Currently I'm reading the first book of the Lunar Chronicles, Cinder. Um, it's a really good book. It's set in the future and the main character it's a Cinderella like rewrite remake and the main character is like the I think it's 38% cyborg. <laughs> and um but it's set um well, way in the future I already said stuff like that. Um basically she she's from what is the country's called just Europe in general but her stepfather who adopted her died a year after she was adopted and he lives in Beijing and then the stepmother blames her for his death because there's this new plague which basically everyone's dying of and he died of it so the stepmother blames her so therefore treats her really badly so she's the only person who works and then suddenly one of her stepsisters who's actually really kind and really nice gets the plague and her stepmother completely blames her for it and then it's kind of about how she's then sent off to be tested on the plague and then somehow she's immune to it and she's trying to find out why she's immune to the plague and therefore because of that the doctor thinks that maybe she, they can find a cure from her It's because then, like, say, for example, if you're in a car accident, in order to, like, replace your parts, they replace it with robo ro okay. robotic parts. <laughs> yeah. Seems very top intriguing. And how did you get to know about it? Um, I don't know. I just, I saw it, like, on social media and stuff, and people were saying it was a really good book, so I just wanted to try it. And what's her name? Cinder. Cinder. Yeah. So we have one of the nine spots. Yes, we do. Yeah. We do indeed. So we're on a different sort of scale. Um, yes, because of course that's another thing that um, robots may be playing with the needs of human rights for robots. Um, I am currently reading a book from my reading list for next year. Um, it is called Cuckoo Cheating by Nature. Um, and it is, I'm not very far in, but it's essentially, from what I've gathered and from the reviews, it's a bit of a, well, it's about animal behaviour and as it suggests about the cuckoo and how um, essentially cuckoos are known as being really deceptive in nature and you know everyone knows about pushing the eggs out the nest um, but it's essentially uh, a story about how that has evolved um, in terms of something known as the red queen hypothesis which is something I'm really really interested in um, it's evolutionary biology and looks at how organisms compete um, and essentially try to gain the upper hand by constantly evolving um, but what's really interesting about this book is that it's written um, almost like a detective novel um, which I really really enjoy and that's one of the things when I was picking out a book from these hundreds and hundreds of biology books I was like oh god and then saw that it was a bit of a mishmash of, um, of fiction and non-fiction um, which really drew me to it and I am enjoying it very much so far um, but yeah that's that's pretty much what I'm reading at the moment along with a couple research papers here and there but I shan't bore you with those <laughs> otherwise I will nerd out too much and you'll all be bored <laughs> um, Amanda Craig, who's an author we follow and lives on Twitter, um, she said yesterday that the, she lives in 
Devon. The uh, cuckoo is back for the first time in 28 years yesterday. Yeah, there has been um, a, a, a spike of them, which is uh, interesting. To be fair, I don't think I've ever seen a cuckoo beyond photos. You don't very often see um, them, but you do usually hear them. Yeah, you can, um, especially the chicks. The chicks are very, very loud when they're pushing other yeah, babies out the nest. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, Maybe not live, live ones. Definitely. Well, I should hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has a very bad reputation. It does, it does. but it's just very evolutionary. <laughs> Clever, honestly. Evolutionary. Cle- evolutionary. It's read its origin species, basically. <laughs> yeah, it knows it's a selfish gene. It's <laughs> 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 a book we won't talk about. <laughs> no, dang. Why are the English language banter? Oh. Yes. had a very bad reading year last year and only reading 14 books. I've already read 13 this year. So, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it, actually. I've read quite a lot over Easter, um, including Clara and the Sun, which is a new Ish- Ishiguru book. Um, are you nodding because you've read it? Okay. So I love a lot of Ishiguru's work. I love Never Let Me Go, which I teach to Year 12. I've, I love um, Reigns of the Day. Um, Clara and the Sun was readable. Yikes. <laughs> but a kind of uh, it was like the it was a bit like what um, to go set a watchman is to, to, to kill a mockingbird it's the kind of the bits that got forgotten for a good reason is it kind of it's more sci-fi it's more dystopian but it's much less profound Did you, have you read it as well? no I've I've um, read a lot of reviews of it. Yeah. I'm ignoring about it because I love Never Let Me Go. Yeah. Like, oh. it is, it's very like Never Let Me Go. Yeah. And the character, who is a cyborg, um, she's what's called a AT, which is something friend, uh, automatic friend, I think. 38%. Yeah, no, fully, fully automatic. 100%. Um, and it's this idea that children, and this is referenced in Never Let Me Go, children have been genetically modified to become better students but they've become physically weaker because of it and so they can't really leave the house so they have to have these like automatic friends or uh, like electric friends who are basically dolls that have living features um and it's told from the point of view of the doll who takes on the um the friendship of this little girl who's quite damaged um it's good had i not loved never let me go so much i probably would have liked it more and I did read it in a day and a half. It's very, very easy to read. Um, I also read The Midnight Library, the new Matt Hay book, which is wonderful. It's, it should be twee, but he just manages to bypass that so beautifully. Um, and it just, yeah, it, it was so touching. And so this is a book that really stays with you, I think. Uh, what else? I read My Brilliant Friend, which people rave about, but I didn't love. I couldn't get into it at all. No, I, I, by about page 200, I was like, I'm bored, really bored. Uh, but I have an Italian friend who loves it, but she read it in the Italian, so I wondered whether the translation might be better. And then at the moment I'm reading something called Buddha which sounds like it should be a Buddhist book, but it's actually about a Glaswegian man, written in Glaswegian dialect, about a Glaswegian man who becomes Buddhist, um, and his family are all totally shocked by it, and I've only read about five pages, so I couldn't really, <laughs> I can't really uh, comment on that, but that's as far as I've got so far. Yes. Very interesting. But yes, have actually been enjoying reading and finding time for it, which has been lovely. Lulu, she will talk again. Oh, there's a caterpillar on the thing. Oh, oh dear. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yes, that's all right then. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> just have to make sure we put it on a plant so I can eat something. Oh, it's on the side than... of the box? Yeah. yeah. Biscuit. Sorry, I got distracted by that. No. <laughs> Sidetrack by giving it something to like eat. Alice in Wonderland. Has it got its hookah with it? Oh, mm. Um. So I. Um. Yeah. I Welcome to Kill a Mockingbird. Yes. <laughs> and disabled. I yes. was going to come to that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been reading quite a few picture books recently. Um. But yeah, and yeah, mostly to Kill a Mockingbird. Um. I really like to Kill a Mockingbird. I think it's probably one of my favourite books now because I, I, if I could write a book half as good as that, then I'd be well true. proud of myself. True, yes, um, yeah, but you will, you will. Um, yeah, I just, I, I love how every 
sentence and every word has a, a really picked out precise meaning to it and I like how many layers there are to everything mm. everyone says mm. um, and I just I, I just love it it's like a soundscape but in, in, in words just make home is such a like just I love it like a blank slate but then half a lead just builds all of these just small details and it's just amazing so. yes which means that you keep finding new things, don't yeah. you? Yeah, I'm sorry. sad we're not doing it anymore, but also glad. So. <laughs> well, it's good we did it. You can still it. love it, even if you are still yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can always find more. What else, then? Um, I've read a couple pages of... Was it Clara? Is it Clara or Clara? Mm-hmm. Clara and the Sun. Um, I'm quite enjoying it so far. I thought it was surprisingly easy to read, considering it said Nobel Prize winner on the front. The, that's not an insult, but... Um, well, you're doing better than when I did him for Blitzock a few months ago, isn't she? As I was quite insulting, <laughs> if you remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, I've been a bit sidetracked by exams. Well, yes, of course. Um, so next is in spectacles, uh, apart from creative writing. Maybe I can write the next Kazuo Ishiguro novel in my creative writing. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, write what you know. Yeah. I think write the next in spectacles. Be honest. Oh, that great all of message. All of them in the same book. All of them yes. in the same book. Yeah. Mockingbird and the Spectacles do have a wonderful message. There was, it was when it was banned from the AQA spec by certain people, um, and uh, one of the outcries was nobody has ever been um, negatively affected by reading and studying. To I think that was one of the things that people said. And I that really stayed with me. Mm. Mm-hmm. It does. It really teaches you about humanity and kind of beautiful lessons. Yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah, so apart from picture books and Chicken and Mockingbird and Clarence and that's what I have to say. Okay. Right. And I've decided the caterpillar is called Sherbet, so. Sherbet? Yeah, then. Love it. Is it great? Yeah. Yeah. It's having a bit of a it? hard time, I think. Needs, it it needs around. a plant to be put on. I'd say. Can you have a little one Yeah, we could maybe. Uh, Are they real? Transfer. Yeah, they're real. Yeah, I think they're real. They're real, yeah. Hello. Who's next? It is Sienna. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, same thing as Lulu. We had been to kill the mockingbird exam, so I've been rereading that again, and I love it just as much, if not more, after um, you know, after we studied it, because like I read it during the summer, and I liked it, but I didn't really understand everything. And then now that I've read it again, I understand so much more now after I've studied it, which is really nice. Plus, I love it for the same reasons Lulu said. It's it's a really good book. It's so good. <laughs> and, yeah, I think she the next... She very hard on it. She really did. Yeah. Um, and they're edited too, whereas the Ghost Head to Watchmen is just not the same at all. Do you know what Ghost Head to Watchmen is? Isn't it the first draft? Yeah, it's the... Yeah, it's the first draft. Yeah. And then the, the editor said, we like the child version of Scout. We don't really like the adult version. We do more with the child version. So that's mm. it. I haven't read the Ghost at Mo- Watchmen though. I would probably no. don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's Watchmen a reason it's the first draft. Yes. It's not terrible, but it's nothing no, when it's... you expected. It's a bit like yeah, Clarence. The comparison. Yeah. The only thing she said about is that the adult scout is um, less. It's less a hagiography of Atticus, basically. Um, I'm probably. It's shocking for that reason, but on the other hand, we don't need it because we're allowed. So, yeah. yeah. It's only you've had it by your computer for the I have. last week. I looked at it again before I taught the last lesson to uh, Year 11. Um, yeah. just, just for some context. For some context, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I thought you were reading it for fun. Not again, no. <laughs> no, not, not again. <laughs> It was good the day it came out to feel that you know the rest of the country we're all we were all reading the same text for the re- same reason because we'd love the first one. But then people thought it was a sequel. I think that was a problem. Well, that's how they marketed it very badly. Yeah, they did, and that's why people got upset because they thought it was what happens next, not yeah. how did it all start. And I think yeah, maybe the the uptake would have been worse by the marketing that way, but it meant that the reviews were so scathing. Yeah, I mean it's written it's written like a sequel. Um, 
but it just doesn't, it's just a bit of a waste of time. <laughs> it's the, the, the first one's better. Kill them the first one's better. Yeah. So, especially the voice. That's good. So Alex, you've been slaving away too. So yes, I have been. Anything? Um, yeah, like Lily and Sienna, I've mainly been doing um, revision, so I've uh, I've kind of been looking into like a bit of a few kind of odd gothic bits here and there. Mm-hmm. So I read um, a little bit of the Wasp Factory because oh, I was like, yeah, preparing for my exam. Very yeah, sensible, yeah, yeah, it was really interesting. Um, I think, yeah, I, I guess you know you kind of know what you're in for with it. You know, like it's just quite grim, Mayhem, but it's gore, very yeah. yeah. Not mm. for Oh, yeah, no, definitely. certainly not for under 16. So. Yeah, but it had like a kind of it has a kind of odd humour to it, you know. Like it's yeah, it's quite fun. Yeah, I didn't know it was intentional, but I mean, I mean, yeah, it's like it's getting a sense. Yeah, but yeah, I did, I did enjoy it, and I think um, it's probably because of that. It's very good to um, compare to other Gothic texts that are very cynical. Mm. This is what I'm going to write in my exam standpoint. Mm. Um, and I've been very, very slowly reading, I think it's The Happening by Kate Chopin, because I, I started oh, yeah, reading it yeah. ages and ages ago, because, um, because I, I've always really liked her short stories, mm. and um, it's kind of just been a bit more, not of the same, obviously, but I feel like similar ideas, but really expanded on much more. Mm. Um, but I started reading it a while ago, and then I kind of forgot about it, but I saw there was um, a podcast of it on Spotify, and I went, oh, I should probably go read that, <laughs> go finish <laughs> reading that. <laughs> So I've been doing that very slowly and I'm really enjoying it. Um, and I think I think the last like whole book I read was quite a while ago and it was um Ah, it was Despised and Rejected by Rose Alatini, which is like oh, yeah. yeah, I re- it was um it's like a it's a Persephone book. Mm-hmm. It's it's I think published um during or like quite immediately after World War One and mm. it's written um about like conscientious objectors and like it's it's very you know kind of focused on like that ideology mm. and i think a lot of it is kind of like just defending that point of view and like has a lot of arguments mm. from that but also it's kind of about like the characters it's a personal difficulties mm. um but i found that really enjoyable yeah and i thought i i think i read it in like a week like i found it quite compelling um, it's very fun yeah yes indeed yes. they've got a letter yes. oh. bar, so oh. go off and watch <laughs> see them <laughs> You have to go and visit, yeah. Go to Mark, Dale, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And the American Museum, which is really good. Yeah. No, well worth, well worth seeking out Persephone in Bath. Definitely. Yes. This week's Persephone post is all about Shirley Williams, her parents. large reading list for the summer then? I do, do. yeah, I've just saw the master collection and I keep them to go around so <laughs> I'm too busy. Yeah, I've got a... Um, <laughs> they are absolutely a bit of me <laughs> preparation. Fully intending it to pronounce it like that at university, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I thought it was great. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have been meaning to read um, a bit more philosophy, just like kind of in preparation for because I think it's very interesting. Because um, I feel like I need to one up my other undergraduate classmates. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, yeah, I've got a bit of um, Angela Carter on there as well, because I read The Bloody Shame that, and I thought that was very enjoyable. So I'm kind of trying to broaden my horizons on that a little bit. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll try to. <laughs> I looked up my notes when I went to the Gothic um, talk last year, and um, uh, Kate Moss and Sarah Perry were—they were so dismissive of Carter. I just loved it. <laughs> loved it. Envy. Yeah, just Envy. fairy tales. That's what it is. Not really important to Gothic anymore. Oh, okay then. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> right, Miss Rio, what have you been reading this week then? This week, um, I've not really done much reading this week. No, okay. No, I finished um, How to Stop Time 
Oh, you did? Yeah, so I thought I'd give myself Another a little... Another backache, yes. A little time to kind of yeah. <laughs> ease out of that. Um, yeah, I might read uh, Life After Life. Oh, no, Life After... You know, we were talking about Life After Life last week, the Kate mm-hmm. Atkinson, um, which has lots of different uh, stories of the same person in it. Um, they are... They've commissioned it for BBC, so oh. they're casting it now. It was on... Um, Sadly, it's not a new Jackson. I could have done with a new Jackson, um, as they owe us two, but never mind. <laughs> oh, it's well. life after life, that's all right. Well, we like Jackson. Yeah. 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 But mm. I might, it seems like it's in a similar vein to How to Stop Time. Mm. I enjoyed that, and I'm in that mm. kind of mood. <laughs> you yeah. know, when you just find a theme that you want to kind of stick to, so I might I think I'll give that a go. Yeah, no, it's definitely yeah. worthwhile. Definitely. Yeah. So. Good. Mr Humphreys, what have you been reading? Right. Well... Because you did read at the weekend, you told me. I, I, well, I read one one thing, um, and it, I read another Carnegie uh-huh. book, and this is an ideal opportunity to ask if you've heard of the Carnegie Medal. Are we going to shadow it? We're, well, you know, we would normally shadow it in reading group. Uh, Miss Rio sent an email, did you not? Yes, to year seven. So have a look at that. Um, because we obviously we can't shadow it in a way we normally would, yeah. um, but we will we will next year. Mm-hmm. But there's a challenge, isn't there, Miss Huntley, that we um, extended about a uh, tweet length review of a Carnegie book, mm-hmm. yeah. and just and just, and just send it to either myself or both of us, mm-hmm. and then uh, share your thoughts on it. Now, have, are you aware of what's on the shortlist this year? No. no? Well, we have it in the green box oh, here, so. so you could borrow it and start reading. I can help. I'm sure you, yeah. Be honest. So yeah, here's a short list. Um, now I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to hold them all up to the camera because we did that um, a couple of weeks ago or last week. You're going to have to watch the video. Don't have to watch the video. Yes, the video. It's uh, if you want more thorough detail. But I read. Have you read this one? I started. You started. Yeah. Yes, she has. So I read this. Excellent. Reserve it before Miss Rio gets in there. It's a it's a race. <laughs> uh, but clap when you land. Um, have you read the Poet X? Which no. So she won it. Um, what was it two years ago, three years ago with the Poet X? And this is she's written another one in between. But this this is her second shortlisted one, and it's it's very clever. So it's written in verse, which is what she does, and it's told from the point of view of two sisters who actually don't know each other. One's in the Dominican Republic and one's in the USA, and they both share a father. And it's, uh, so Clap When You Land is a reference to when you're on a plane. And you, I don't know if any of you have experienced this, sometimes when the plane lands, the passengers burst into spontaneous applause <laughs> to say, well done, bravo, bravo pilot for landing the plane so safely. Um, and that's what it's a ref- reference to. Um, but, so they got a shared father, but they don't know they got a shared father. They were born two months apart with different mothers, basically. Now, what works about it is that it's told from both of their points of view. They both got an equal say. Um, the author, Elizabeth Acevedo, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, she said originally she just wrote it from one point of view, and someone said to her, the other sister needs to have a say as well. And their voices are both very distinct, and because they're sisters, they both unconsciously echo each other. And, you know, it's about um, things like forgiveness, and because obviously initially when they do shockingly find out, and they're both grieving, of course, because, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, there was uh, the flight um, that their father was on. He was the pilot. Uh, the plane crashed and everyone on board died, including the father. And that, that actually refers to a real life um, air crash that happened. Yeah, it did. It happened about two months after um, 9-11. And as soon as they determined that the cause wasn't terrorism, everyone just forgot about it because everyone was still thinking about 9-11. So, so I think I, you know, I think she felt it was it was only right. Sorry, Mrs. Rushum. She, <laughs> everyone felt it was only right that um, so she felt it was only right that this got the coverage it deserved, essentially, and it really has. Um, but yeah, it's it's very powerful and very much worth a read. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm I've pledged to read the entire Carnegie shortlist this year. So that's three I've read. Which ones have you read? I've read so. Uh, this one, and as I mentioned last week, I've read these two here. 
you know what I thought of these two from last week's week. video. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I don't know which one I'm going to read next. I mean, we've got you know, Jason Reynolds, he's good, he did Long Way Down, Echo Manson, uh, Rita Seppis is his new one, The Brand Silence, the one who did um, Salt of the Sea, the Girl Who Speaks Beer, which is also, she's been shortest in the fall. We've got Blood Rebel, which is also the first. Then we've got last year's winner here, too, actually, and I was hoping perhaps the video with Miss Rio could talk to yeah. us about this one a bit. remember that I really enjoyed it <laughs> but I don't remember a lot of the um, ins and outs of it but essentially it's about a young black gay um, boy who is just starting uni and it's him kind of um, finding out who he is uh, mm -hmm. you know coming to terms with him being gay and being black and things like that and he finds um, a new lease of life at uni when he joins a drag group and he becomes oh, right. the black okay. flamingo and it's his sort of way mm -hmm. to express himself mm -hmm. and become who he who he is and obviously there's a few there's a few difficult moments it's not um it's not too sad which is what i quite liked about it whereas the poet x for example it's quite this similar mm. kind of vein is quite upsetting in parts this didn't have that same sad edge to it he obviously you know he's quite a sad character sometimes and he goes through some difficult times in terms of you know the people around him but uh there was a real positive edge to it did you find the same thing Lily? yeah when you I, read I didn't it? think it was too sad that was yeah about him being gay um okay i like that it didn't have the poems didn't have most of them mm. didn't have titles and it was mm. almost like chapters because mm. lots mm. of ones that i've read so by sarah crossan um etc mm. they all have titles and i think sometimes it breaks up the um narrative <laughs> a bit but yeah um, i know what you mean it does switch up the format a bit mm. with um letters or oh, still in verse but letters and mm. um oh yeah i forgot about that and text, text messages yeah, isn't there? yeah that's yeah. good so i like that bit um the plot was probably the weakest thing about it but i still enjoyed it i guess the tricky thing with that is it is sort of an autobiography right so i guess the plot's not weak for that reason maybe <laughs> you mean it all, you mean it orchestra yeah oh brilliant Nice to know the orchestra's work uh, up and running again. Great. And the, it's really pretty on the insides. Yeah, it's really, yeah, it's a lot of illustrations. It's yeah. simple, but it's really nice. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a really nice book, actually. I'm, I'm pleased it won, because I won before I won. <laughs> I read it before yeah. it was before on it the won. shortlist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the author is, is great. I've watched a few... Um, readings he's done in interviews mm. and he's really mm. likeable mm. he's so got I hope he keeps writing Thanks. he's got a new um there's a short story compl anthology yeah that um, <laughs> and he's got a new thing coming out in that soon so oh that's good. lovely good yeah d i definitely recommend it mm. it's nice it's an it's an easy read really yeah, yeah. it's quite quite it's happy. quite quick yeah mm. but all verse books so. yeah mm. Sounds good. Yeah. So Esme, now you've arrived. Hello. I'm afraid you have to tell us because you've just just literally arrived. What you've been reading, if uh, or if you've just been revising? Uh, currently stuck in revision hell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I just don't remember what I read over Easter. Did you read anything classical? Review anything classical or? Oh. Um, Read, read, or reread uh, Frankenstein and Bloody Chamber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, not being assessed on those. Uh, I read a non-fiction couple of non-fiction books. Um, one of them's called A History of Archaeology. Um, so the short one is really yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah. English brain has turned off. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We are getting a standing. Yeah. From the Druids through to Nishaw and uh, probably the history of Xanadu. Um, yeah, we've got a bit of a Yeah, quite a few to choose from. Yeah, indeed, yes. <laughs> All, there are more than 200, aren't there now? Is that right? In the library, yeah. In, yeah. in total, there's like more than 500. Yeah. And it's more to come. They're publishing another 20 this year. <laughs> oh my God. So, something for everyone. is actually a real place although this is fictional um, and it's actually in Japan um, and it was set up uh, because of the tsunami um, and uh, you can go to the phone box and you can talk to those who are no longer with you uh, and indeed people go from all over the world. This story was inspired by a real place in the northeast of Japan in Awati Prefecture. One day, a man installed a telephone box in the garden of his house at the foot of Kujiyarama, the fountain of the whale, just next to the city of Otsuchi, one of the places worst hit by the tsunami of 11th March 2011. Inside, there is an old black telephone, disconnected, that carries voices into the wind. Thousands of people make the pilgrimage there every year, and this is about uh, a few of them. Um, and uh, it's very sad, but it's also very positive. Of grief comes things that are positive, and uh, there's also a podcast on sounds about place um, and the ghosts of the tsunami because there were myriad sightings of ghosts afterwards, um, as people could not be found. And then around the world and caught up with everybody hopefully and um, hopefully keep reading and despite all the revision for everything um, it's a good way to rest your mind isn't it? and uh, do something different mm -hmm. um, and get those reading lists ready for the summer are we going to do book chase we'll do book chase the last last one yes In person, yeah, great. Oh, well, we might always come to that then. That's excellent. Good. Lovely. I'm doing a an online uh, thing tonight called Shakespeare's Sisters, so that will be um, interesting. And then tomorrow night, I've got a, a globe climate change and Shakespeare conference over the weekend. So I'm going to be very erudite very by nice. the end of the weekend. <laughs> Shakespeare. And it's don't forget Shakespeare the Shakespeare sister. slam tomorrow. Thing. It's about um, his literally his sisters. And the voices that were silenced by housework and you know other things. Um, it uh, it should be should be interesting. British Library. Um, lots. In fact, there's lots of things happening at the British Library that you can do online. Very cheap. Five pounds only. Well, really good value. Simon Armitage is doing a, an A to Z of the library, which he set up last year, but in fact never happened. So it's happening online now. Next. Uh, he's written a new poem. Anybody see it over the weekend? No? Mm -hmm. He wrote, it's called The Patriarchs and uh, about, Philip? about Philip, yeah. Um, <laughs> Prince Philip, yeah. Prince. yeah I was oh, sorry, I meant Prince Philip. Just <laughs> Philip. Sorry. I couldn't remember the word before, it's okay. <laughs> it, was, it was Elizabeth's birthday yesterday. Lizzie. Lizzie's birthday. Betty. Um, uh, good Queen Bess and all that. Yeah. Yeah, true. The Patriarchs, an elegy. The weather in the window this morning is snow. Unseasonal singular, singular flakes, a slow winter's final shiver. On such an occasion, to presume to eulogise one man is to pipe up for a whole generation. That crew who 
survival was always the stuff of minor miracle. It came ashore in orange crate coracles, fought ingenious wars, finangled triumphs at sea with flaming decoy boats and sidestep torpedoes. Husbands to duty, they unrolled their plans across billiard tables and vehicle bonnets, regrouped at breakfast. What their secrets were was everyone's guess and nobody's business. Great grandfathers from birth, in time they became both inner core and outer case, in a family heirloom of nesting dolls. Like evidence of early man, their bootprints stand in the hardened earth of rose beds and borders. They were sons of a zodiac out of sync with the solar year, but turned their minds to the days, big science and heavy questions. To study their hands at rest was to picture maps showing captured valleys and indigo streams, schemes of old campaigns and reconnaissance missions. Last of the great avuncular magicians, they kept their best tricks for the grand finale, disproving immortality and disappearing entirely. The major oaks in the woods start tuning up and skies to come will deliver their tributes. But for now, cold April's closing moments parachute slowly home. So by mid-afternoon, so is recast as seed heads.